Hello there, fellow reefers. Uh, my name is Chris Meckley from ACI Aquaculture. Today we're gonna do a little video on uh, zoanthids, palithoas, uh, talk a little bit about uh, their care, about some things you shouldn't do with them, and of course, things you should do with them. So a as a uh, importer of tropical fish and corals, we bring in large numbers of zoanthids. It's one of the corals that we have a lot of permits for. We get wide varieties of zoanthids and palithoas. Uh, some of them are very, very vibrant in colors, and others are very common and, you know, not as highly sought after. The great thing about zoanthids is they're easy to keep and there's such a wide variety of colors that they come in. I mean, we import a lot of corals and it doesn't ever cease to amaze me that there's always on almost every shipment of corals that we get a new zoanthid or palithoa that I've never seen before. Um, and of course, that's part of what I love about what I do is there's always something new coming in that you've never seen. It keeps it interesting. And I think that's a lot of the reasons why people get into reefing is because there's always something new out there for them to discover. If we can, you know, enjoy them in our aquariums for our family and friends and for our personal selves, then, you know, it's something I think that everybody should have if it's in their budget. Uh, Fruit Loops, we've gotten them. That's a pretty common name. Um, everybody loves the Fruit Loops. We have Rastas. One of my favorite zoanthids. We also have uh, LA Lakers. That's just to name a few. Get back, getting back to the zoanthids and their care, we recommend in here that if you're gonna be an, a beginner and you're gonna start off with corals, zoanthids are one of the easiest corals to start off with, mainly because they almost don't care a whole lot with what you give out when it comes to light and flow. They do better in very, very high flow. A big misconception is the fact that zoanthids really need to be fed. They come from very turbid waters in the wild most of the times when I'm talking to the divers that we receive these corals from, they can barely see three feet in front of them when they're collecting zoanthids. So that doesn't mean that the water is dirty, that just means it's silty from all the current that's running through, they're stirring it up constantly, which means these corals get a lot of food. Of course, they have plenty of times when the water is crystal clear and, abs and they're getting tons of sunlight. So that's one of the things that is great with zoanthids. They're a great beginner coral because you can put them in low light, you can put them in high light, you can put them in moderate light. I recommend that you feed them a wide variety of things. I mean, one of the things you can just put in for a whole aquarium feed would be phytoplankton. Phytoplankton is very important. But for zoanthids, we feed otohemi pellets. They also get a mixture with cyclops, as well as calanus. They even are able to eat brine shrimp, and we feed baby mice shrimp. So there's a lot of different things you can feed your zoanthids. It's not something you have to do on a daily basis. The more you feed though, I guarantee you, you will notice the growth. When we started feeding our zoanthids from one polyp to covering a plug in a month was amazing because we were only getting maybe three, four, five, six polyps out of them a month before. When we started feeding them, it made production of the coral for aquaculture go up 10 times. It allowed us to offer these corals that are truly aquacultured from the wild piece to the aquacultured piece a lot faster. And of course, zoanthids, just like every other coral that comes in from the wild are prone to have parasites on them. Since we do import, it's something that we take very seriously. Zoanthids are probably one of the worst corals that we bring in for parasites. I don't know all about every single one that's on zoanthids. I just know the, you know, a few basic ones. Zopox is one. I know what we do in here when we see Zopox, we basically dip the coral in what I used to use all the time. I still have plenty of it. I don't know if it's still made. It's called Medi Coral Dip. Um, and we also dip our zoanthids in fresh water. That seems to help them out a lot. Um, 10 or 15 minutes of a whole colony in some fresh water. The coral doesn't care. They curl up so tight. Whatever's on the outside gets killed, put them back in the water, within 10 or 15 minutes they're open back up. There's a lot of other ways you can dip your corals. People use bear. I recommend that you just go and use the dip that you're used to using from your local fish store or something that you use on a regular basis. It will take care of the parasites. You got zoanthid eating nudibranchs. They're just a royal pain in the butt because you can kill the adults, but then there's eggs. So they require multiple dippings. Zoanthid spiders. 
They're probably one of the hardest to get rid of. We actually um, started using Interceptor when we had a massive outbreak of these spiders on um, some colonies that came in years ago. Uh, so now we end up using uh, the Interceptor treatment on a regular basis. It's not foolproof though. I've seen them still survive that. If that doesn't, I always recommend the fresh water because a living saltwater animal, like a, you put a fish in fresh water or saltwater for too long, it's not gonna live, it's gonna die. So all of the nudibranchs, the spiders, and any other parasite is not gonna live in fresh water for very long, but because the zoanthid is a coral and it can close up, it will be fine. That is something I recommend anybody do, especially if, it doesn't matter if you buy a frag from somebody, it doesn't matter if you buy a wild coral and you buy it from a reputable person. I said this in the past video, dip your corals before they go in your aquarium. Quarantine your corals before you go in your aquarium, especially if it's a wild piece. Wild pieces are prone to habit. It's a given. There's nothing you can do about it. I do everything I can, but it's still not enough. The stores that buy the stuff from me, they do it. It still could not be enough. So be very vigilant with what you're doing. You're investing a lot of money into your beautiful aquarium. Make sure that you're patient. Patience will go very far with this hobby. If you're not patient, unfortunately I see a lot of people that are not patient. They want instant gratification. They leave the hobby before they even had a chance to get into the hobby because they didn't do the proper steps to take care of the animals before they put them in their main display tank. The one key thing that I learned over the years with zoanthids is iodine. If your iodine level is low in your aquarium, and in 95% of our aquariums, the iodine level is low. Even if your salt has the proper iodine level in it, which I think is 0.1, or no, 0.34 parts per million, the problem with that is, is iodine bonds with organics very easily and very quickly. So most people don't realize that you need to add iodine to your aquarium almost every single day in order for it to stay in solution. Um, if you have any nitrates in your aquarium, you need to add iodine on a daily basis because as soon as you add it, the corals are gonna absorb it and it's gonna bond with your nitrates or your phosphates and it's gonna dissipate and it's not even gonna be detectable in your system in a very short period of time. So to keep your zoanthids healthy, I would recommend that you, you know, don't, if you can't test for iodine, don't dose it every day. Dose it once a week. You know, do what the recommendations are according to the brand of iodine that you have available. We use Lugol solution, which is, you know, pharmaceutical grade or pure iodine. It's the red liquid that looks yellow. It's something you definitely want to look into. It will help your zoanthids grow faster. Also helps them fight infection. And helps to make them more vibrant. Something that is overlooked a lot is dosing iodine in your aquarium. Any zoanthid is very toxic with, uh, it's called polythoatoxin. Um, it has been known to cause a lot of harm to people, blindness. I've heard of dogs that have died from eating a zoanthid that was dropped from somebody fragging them. So it's something you have to be very careful with, especially if you are fragging them. Um, I highly recommend, and even my guys that, my main guy that does all my fragging, I make him wear eye protection, I make him wear a face mask, they wear goggles or um, gloves just to ensure that, you know, if that zoanthid that he's cutting accidentally or does squirt water out, he's protected. I've heard stories of people with zoanthids in their aquarium that they want to eradicate them, eradicate them from a rock. The one was the craziest story I ever heard of. The guy put his rock in a pot of boiling water. Well, what happens when you boil water? It evaporates the water. So if that polytho is in there and that toxin's in that water, it's going vaporized. So you're breathing it in, your whole house can be affected by it. Be very careful with, with, poly, with zoanthids and polythoas. We all love them. They're an easy coral to keep, but also can be very dangerous. Another thing about polythoas is, is, you know, in ancient times back in, you know, in Hawaii, especially from what I can remember hearing about, they used to take the polythoas off the rocks and they would actually use them to make poison darts to kill the animals for their food. Um, to me, that doesn't sound like too good of an idea because if you're going to eat that animal that you just killed with poison dart that was made from polythoa, it could be a problem, but I guess it really wasn't back in the day because they did it all the time. Polythoa toxin is also something that is used in cancer research. Um, there's articles written, papers written. Uh, I was told by a doctor that it is also is used in, um, it's, it's part of some chemotherapy. So it's great for, there's so many things that we don't know about our oceans. Polythoa zoanthids of all things could be a cure for the worst possible plague anybody can get cancer. Once again, my name is Chris Meckley from ACI Aquaculture. 
I hope you enjoyed this short segment on zoanthids.